guys, Karma Nab, this time back with another review. Today we're going to be reviewing the BMW 5 Series G30. Uh, now this is not no ordinary 5 Series and that's because the owner of this vehicle has spec'd a very important option in my opinion and that is the legendary B57 engine. Now today, in today's video we're going to be going over the specs, we're going to be going over the interior, the, you know, the outside looks um, and how it drives most importantly. And then yeah, I'll give you my overall verdict on the car. Uh, but before that, let's cut to the montage. series is BMW's mid-size executive saloon and the rivals were the Audi A6, the Mercedes E-Class and the Jaguar XF. Now to describe the 5 series I'd say it describe a bit like my outfit you know it's like a business sort of it's like an old businessman yeah he thinks he's um, thinks he's all cool you know going to his corporate job but then he's also wearing you know trainers excuse the whole uh, don't, don't watch that. By the way my cameraman's useless I forgot these are the so-called trainers um, these are actually my heel and toe shoes, so you know they're quite ragged. But yeah, but he's wearing trainers because you know he, he, he thinks he's still young. He still 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 thinks he's athletic, um, and that's a bit like the five series. You know, it's a very comfortable car, but if you show it a bend or two, it's not going to crap itself. Now, let's show you guys the exterior of the car. Now, right here we've got the camera come closer. We've got the um, LED headlights as standard, but these, in my opinion, are the, the, the shit DRLs, so they look like the police spec cars. Um, you can upgrade them for laser lights or even just the normal um, adaptive. These are just the standard ones. Um, if you guys can tell, this has a black kidney grill, and this, that's because this car is optioned with the M Sport Plus pack, um, which is a free grand option, and what that does, that includes uh, M Sport brakes, like the upgraded brakes, um, shadow line trim around the center, they've got a bootless spoiler as well, um, but yeah. In general, in terms of pricing, the 5 Series starts from 42 grand, but that's going to get you a really base spec SE, like literally a police car. Um, this, as mentioned, this is the 530D X Drive, so this I would say retails around 57,000 pounds brand new. So it is an expensive car, but again, it's competitively priced with the E Class and A Class. Now, again, like I said, M Sport Plus pack, so you get these massive 20 inch wheels, they look really nice, but yeah, as you can see, they're kind of a curb magnet. Not me. Don't worry, I, I stay far from the curb. Uh, don't, don't try to talk about me. But yeah, as mentioned, look, this is the gloss black shadow line trim. Um, and you move on to the rear, is the boot spoiler that we're on about. And it actually matches the side skirts on the side. They're finishing a matte sort of finish. I thought they would be gloss black as well. Um, the rear end of this car, I'd say, is my favorite angle. You know, with the LCI, of course, you've got these free detail lamps. They look really good. And you got, yes, I mean, they are sort of fake. If you look for a car wire stick of truth, there we are. Car Mad Nab stick of truth right here. We can see that there are real exhaust pipes in there. So, what props to BMW for that? And they're not just, I don't think they're just covers. I think they are actually welded to the tip. So, but yeah, I mean, that sums up the exterior of the car. I think the car is finished in a either this is black sapphire or the other black they're basically a 900 pound option the car only comes standard in white um, but this is a metallic paint but that sums up the exterior of the car i think it's a very nice sporty looking saloon in my opinion i think 
the 5 Series is actually better looking than, the, uh, than its rivals on the outside. But if we move on to the inside. So guys, you join me in the interior of the G35 Series. Now, obviously this is an LCI, so it's been slightly refreshed. Um, you've got a massive, uh, I think it's more than 12 inches um, uh, iDrive screen, and it is touchscreen by the way, uh, which is very nice. And thank God BMW, I believe iDrive 6, which is, uh, the, no sorry, iDrive 7, my bad, um, which is in this car, is the best system in its class. Uh, because you've got the rotary dial here, this is also touchscreen, so you can write letters on it. You can, you know, even if you want to touch the screen, you can, you can operate via the steering wheel, you know, if you look at Audi, that's just touchscreen only. Realistically, you're not gonna be able to use that whilst you're driving. Mercedes as well, that's a good system. But in my opinion, um, again, with their little, it kind of gives you arthritis, their little their little iDrive controller. Whereas this is just very nice, very well thought out. Um, but yeah, in general, in the front, um, you know, it's a very nice place to be. You know, all the materials are nice and soft touch. You've got these really nice trims, even on the top here, no scratchy plastics to be seen whatsoever. Um, likewise in the 3 Series, but in the 5 Series, I say it's just a little bit more well put together. Um, you've got these really nice ambient lighting surrounding around, and uh, you've got this M Sport steering wheel, multifunctional, of course. And you've got a digital display right in front of you. Obviously, you can opt for a heads up display, but that is an optional extra as part of a technology pack. Um, but yeah, in general, I think in terms of driving uh, position, you can get nice and low. My only gripe with the 5 Series uh, I'm finding is the steering wheel. I just wish it could be a bit more adjustable. I do find it's a bit too high. Uh, but other than that, I'd say compared to the E-Class, whilst the 5 Series design is quite simplistic and potentially, maybe even you could argue borderline boring, um, everything is so functional. And in my opinion, I think uh, it actually looks a bit more elegant and actually well put together. Whilst Mercedes, are un undoubtedly, they make really nice looking interiors. Um, they're actually not that functional and you know, they're made of like cheaper plastics and you know, screens. So I definitely do think this is the better interior out of the three, um, as well as the exterior. But yeah, in terms of storage, obviously you've got um, two uh, sort of flaps here and you know, you can put your phones down here. Uh, you've got a really nice glove box as well, um, relatively okay. Um, you've got these door cubbies here, you can fit two bottles and some larger items as well. Um, but yeah, I think my only gripe is, despite this being a modern interior, I think a lot of manufacturers do this when they facelift cars, is they actually end up making you know relatively modern new models look old because Bear in mind guys, the G30, it was the first crossover with the F-Series and G-Series. So they had to implement some areas of the F-Series and you can you can see that. I think the what lets this car down the most is the air vents. Now that the new G, uh, the G21, for example, the 3 Series, um, they have chrome grills all around. But I will say the door cards on these are much better because you know, you've still got double layered ambient lighting. In the new cars, I feel like they skimp out on the ambient lighting, even in the higher models like the X5, the 7 Series, etc. But yeah, that sums up the front. In terms of the back. Ample loads of space. Again, I would say personally, um, obviously headroom is quite good. Um, but yeah, and obviously the windowsill isn't too high. The windows do go all the way down, but child lock is on. Um, but yeah, I think it's a really nice place to be. Again, look, you've got this lovely ambient lighting here. The only gripe I have with the back is uh, the actual uh, center console area is yes, they give you two USB slots, but you know, some, some sort of digital display for the climate would have been nice, um, I think. But you, again, you've got these nice handy cup holders and I really like the fact that, I don't know, all these guys breathe air, like what's all this rubbish? Um, but you've got these really nice uh, cup holders so you can actually use it as a functional armrest as opposed to having holes in your armrest and then when you want it, you can flip them out. So that's all nice and good. Um, to sit free abreast, it's all right. Um, the car is wide. I think that's what it, the advantage is over the 3 Series. Whilst legroom is relatively the same, I'd say it's width that counts in the 5 Series. But that sums up the interior. Let's look a look, take a look at the boot space. So guys, uh, in terms of boot, very spacious again. Again, a slight advantage over the 3 Series. Um, you know, if you if you look here, you 
you can see there's a first aid kit they give you there they give you netting as well for storage they give you little storage cells here um i can't remember the exact load capacity but what i can tell you is they fit two large suitcases you know um three about three four uh, handheld ones as well you can easily chuck a pram in there the seats do fold down but i believe it is an optional extra yeah it is so yeah and also if you guys can see the empty slot um yeah so electric tailgate is also another optional extra which i believe it should be standard especially at a price point of around what over 50k you know you can expect things like this on the three series fine but on the five series definitely should be standard but look yes this car might not have hk it might not have you know stuff like electric um, tailgate and 360 cameras but what it does have a very important option is the b57 which i'm going to show you guys now so guys that led me perfectly on to what powers this car a very important legendary diesel lump it's a three liter straight six diesel uh, code name b57 it's powered by a twin scroll turbo um, and it's paired with the eight speed zf and this is the x drive vehicle so it sends um, a lot of it's rear drive bias which is good um, it sends about 70 percent of the rear obviously if it detects slip then it will send more powers to the front um, but in general it's a very very good engine the specs are i think it's a 286 brake because bear in mind this is considered as a mild active hybrid system uh, so basically a 48 volt uh, sort of generator and it helps with coasting and you know other um, economy features but it also gives it a little extra boost as well um, as for torque it's around 650 newton meters which is a lot this car has a lot of ground 0 to 60 is around 5.6 seconds which is just incredible for something that weighs basically two tons so heavy car but heavy performance as well so we've talked about the looks we've talked about the exterior the interior now it's just time to take it for a drive series like to drive at the minute we've got it in comfort with all the traction and everything switched on as you can see or well, as you may probably can't see is we're not jostling around you know the car's not fidgeting around despite we've got run flats which make the car quite harsh than what it's meant to be you know you can definitely you know especially on the m way you can just cruise along you'll get 50 miles per gallon easily obviously around town it's a bit different three liter diesel you should expect around 25 miles per gallon realistically you know but on these long swooping country bends you know we want to find out what's the car like in terms of chassis control so to do that you flick it over into sport so i can traction off just holding it slightly which is what i like you know in the mercedes e-class you can't turn traction off at all especially with the audi as well whereas bmw they let you do things on your own so let's see what let's find out what it's like flick it into manual m2 so-called businessman wants a b-road hoon he definitely can have one but i'd say if you're more interested in sport year driving then you know especially for the money i would pick an m340d you know if you're worrying about fuel cost but you still want performance i would get an m340d or even an m340i they're quite good on fuel as well because bear in mind guys 56k for a car that isn't that much bigger you know, it doesn't really make sense 
in general that's my overall verdict on how it drives just sum up to the conclusion series overall what's my overall verdict in the car well it does what it literally says it's a very comfortable family saloon you know it can fit all your kids and your shopping um it can be very economical as discussed but also can be very sporty as well if you choose the right engine and the right you know sort of drivetrain combinations in general i think you should pick it over the audi a6 and the mercedes e-class but thank you guys for watching please like share subscribe Please let me know what you like, more, more cars you'd like to see on the channel and uh, comment down below uh, what more in general, what kind of content you'd like to see. For now, I've been Carmen now. Take care, guys. Peace.